All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Goose Podcast. I want to expand content a little bit here, more in there. I'm a tiny channel, yes, I am, but the more things to show off to talk about, the better. Um, there's a lot to talk about. I'm here myself, your host Goose, with one of my close buddies here, Potato Mastermind behind Spun Cat and Customs, a very good tech, a very good teacher as a tech. And today we're going to be talking about a lot of cool things within the world of airsoft revolving, teching when it comes to AEG builds, gas guns, um, HPA. We've had experience of everything. I have owned built guns. I've owned HPA. Potato has owned HPA. He has owned gas, everything. So we've been playing for a while and we know how to tinker with them. We know how to build them. So um, to just jump right in. So, let me first, I guess I'll bring this up a topic, Potato, give me your insight on it. Do you see, like, what benefits do you see from transitioning from stock to built? Because I feel like there's a lot of players that have been playing a long ass time, and they're always like, why build, why upgrade, is there really any point to it? So, where do you see the goodness of... So, uh, my two cents on the matter is... Um, ever since kind of, um, like 2016 ish is when I kind of fully got into, uh, full builds doing, you know, electronic MOSFETs, that sort of stuff that isn't just, um, like a hardwired design. So my first build was a Crytac of everything that it could have been. It was a Crytac. I put a BTC Spectre. Okay, uh, let me just say one thing real quick. Crytek owners that want your guns upgraded, I just want to say you're a very cool type of person out there in the world. Um, no offense, but I guess you know you should explain why Crytek's right. in my, so, there are opinions why they're not just the best to dive into in terms of upgrading. All right, so there there are plenty of uh, people out there who own Crytek's. I used to own one. Uh, they're pretty good guns out of the box. They have a really strong gearbox. But the one thing that Crytac messed up is how much material is in their gearbox. So if you look at a Crytac shell compared to a VFC, a JG, whatever, the Crytac shell is a lot more beefy. So um, I don't know if you can pull one up or whatever. I don't know how that all works. But um, they have a lot of material on the inside. So if you wanted to put something like a Gate Titan or a BTC Spectre or something like that, you have to literally Dremel out like all of that on the inside, and it's a pain. Um, so that's what I did for my first gun, and I vowed to never do it again because it sucks. Um, super complicated. You have to make sure it's super smooth. It's just it's rough. So uh, doing other guns that aren't Crytax is super nice, but gate came out with a solution for that so you guys can uh um, use the gate aster which is pretty still much the same have, still thing. have to dremel i mean <laughs> yeah you still have to dremel a little bit but it's not nearly as bad um but at least then if you guys really wanted to you can put that electronic trigger in your crytax so anyway back to the topic at hand which was uh why upgrade so um if you guys don't know on the inside of a gearbox um, what happens when you pull the trigger is two sets of, or well, a set of contacts closes to form a circuit which spins your motor, spins your gears, and then pulls back and then releases the piston. So the first thing to do when upgrading a gun, in my opinion, is to put an electronic trigger. So a MOSFET. It prevents arcing. Uh, generally, you get better trigger response, um, Dean's plugs, that sort of stuff. Uh, you can shoot a whole lot faster, um, and it also replaces some of the most um, the, the most easily broken parts, like the cutoff lever. Cutoff lever is so bad on M4s. Um, they're bound to break. Yeah, they just Regardless they wear down. Regardless of what gun it is, they, they're bound to break. Yeah, they just wear down with the sector gear spinning on it every time. It just It's rough. Uh, so if you put one of the electronic MOSFETs, it gets rid of that. It gets rid of any chance of arcing within the trigger contacts. Um, you don't really get overspin if you have one of the ones that have active braking, so that basically stops the motor. Um, 
where where it needs to based off of the uh, position of the sector gear. Um, another thing is, you know, um, the the performance is only as good as like your gun can do. Uh, it's not a hundred percent the gun, but um, when you're coming up against multiple targets, trigger response is key. Um, also, you know, shooting farther, shooting more accurately. When we play at Black Ops, um, we can sit at a certain part of the field and hit people in the spawn because our guns can shoot farther than they can. Um, I've had some of my guns and some of other familiar or like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. close techs shoot further than some snipers, which is uh, kind of crazy if you mm. think about it. To put into like perspective of like, I guess some people might throw that argument like why you know is the difference even major you know if you if you're local at black ops a good example is like you can build guns that have the capability of shooting from when you first walk onto the field there's a chrono station and if you know what we're talking about by the church there's a direct angle to a white beat up car you know you have the capability of upgrading a gun to shoot at that car if not even further and i've seen ssg 24s Novich snipers barely hit the car. They're AEGs that you can have the capability of making shoot further. So yeah. So as he's saying about that, if you know Black Ops, there's uh, in Junkyard there's a uh, an SUV that's close to South Spawn. I've been able to hit people from that SUV at South Spawn with um, one of my one of my builds, and if you do it right you can you can shoot really far with them yeah so there's definitely a lot of benefits um, i i 100 percent respect you know a lot of people are kind of in that middle ground like do i upgrade do i not um, especially if you are what i like to say a budget softer you know i i consider myself a budget softer i don't like breaking the bank on certain things there is that certain mindset that it's going to cost you a $300 gun and then $500 worth of parts. Um, so one thing that I want to put out is for the guns that I've taken apart repairs and stuff that I've done is every gun I'll use an M4 because that's the best. Well, the V2 gearbox is the best example um, to give essentially every V2 gearbox is the same. You know, they all have their minor differences. Like a Crytek has a shit ton of material that don't know why. Um, is virtually the same so taking that path of upgrading doesn't have to be with an amazing gun granted it's preferred to maybe use like a vfc gearbox because those are very good gearboxes but you can take your cma m4 that you've been beating the hell out of since day one that you've been playing with that rental mask and you can make it shoot really good you know so i think that's something that people should definitely consider is look at price ranges look into it um I've kind of looked into and realized that a parts list, not a full, full parts list, but to get yourself a gun up and running, high firing rate, you know, you get yourself a Titan, um, SHS gears, 13 to 1 or 12 to 1. Well, not SHS now. We'll explain that if we have to, but if we get, if we get there, if we get there, um, a good set of gears that like, it's 150 bucks, you know, you, you know, you get a CM4. Well, yeah, it kind of depends on. Yeah. where you buy things, what's in stock, and exactly what you get. But generally, you can do some pretty um, pretty good stuff for, you know, less than $200, which some people, if you've looked at, like, Umbrella Armory, for instance, because their builds are considerably more expensive, um, just like HPA, um, you can, you know, do stuff yourself or have a local tech do it for a good amount cheaper. And you don't always have to use the top-notch, top-of-the-line, you know, um, yeah. as, highest quality parts. Yeah, as much as like people like Umbrella Armory, OC Airsoft, like I'm fancy, like you know, you look at that and you shy away from it because it's like, oh, they're asking me to pay two thousand dollars for an airsoft gun, and you don't have to take that route. Like, like my opinion towards Umbrella Armory, like if you own one, cool for you, look good for you. Like, hey, I think they shoot really great. It's just you don't have to put that much money into a gun to shoot the way it shoots you know yep. um even like top level teching 
that I have recognized from Potato as well that offers tech service and even Fatco Customs, you know, they offer extremely good builds for a reasonable price. So that's something that, you know, you should 100% consider, especially if you're trying to transition from that aspect of an Airsoft player from like new guy, intermediate to, I'm not going to say pro, I don't like using that word for Airsoft, but like just experience. You, know, you play a lot advanced yeah let's use that you know from the guy that you always do open plays and now you're starting to go to milsons and you're finally playing at those huge saos that you wish you could hit that guy you know i when i went to reindeer games one of the guys that tagged along with my group was um buddy named josh and he played the entire event with the uh stock cry tag and he had a great time still he had a great time but there were moments where like I realized, like, if only he had it, because he got himself in a lot of good positions, a lot of buildings, where if he had a little bit of extra range, he would have been nailing targets. So I think it's, you know, and it's not like a minimal difference, like, oh, you know, I'm only going to shoot 20 feet more away. Hey, man, 20 feet's 20 feet in some situations that you can get yep. the drop on a lot of people. And the nice thing about upgrading as well is that's something that I realize it's it's versatile in terms of what you're doing. You know, a high-speed build also has the range of a DMR, which is awesome. So if you place uh, CQB, that same build is going to work extremely well in that environment. You go outdoors, it's going to still kick ass. A good example is um, Potato did a build for um, Ninja on N7. Tiny little gun. That thing is oh stupid God. tiny. The barrel, I swear, uh, this is a, a pencil. It's 4.5-inch barrel, I believe, 5 inches. And Are that sure? thing shoots probably... One of the farthest, or one of the farthest shooting guns I've ever built. That thing shoots scary good. Um, so definitely, like, you know, if you're on that fence, you know, I, I see it all the time on Facebook on like um, the groups and stuff of people like, do I upgrade? Like, you know, do I do it? You know, I say definitely go. But if you are 100 percent that budget minded person, and you're just stuck on that, like, you know, I can't justify it. Which 100 percent respect. Um, if you're, if you can change anything, change MOSFETs, get rid of the contacts as soon as possible. You know, that's one of the things that I dealt with a lot when, um, doing tech work at black ops is, you know, people would come in and be like, Oh, my contacts are broken. They're burnt. The first thing we always recommend, you know, get a Titan. If you can get a BTC awesome, but those are always limited. So get a Titan. you know, it's going to yep. give you better firing rate. Also, they make Leviathans as well. Good stuff. Jeff Tron. You know, definitely change it out, and they're they're not that expensive. Now that transition well transitions well to the next argument that I'm going to make about, which is a little bit, you know, because some players look at the big upgrade, the big boy. I've experienced playing with this potato hates it, HPA. HPA. <laughs> now, nope. um, a little bit about HPA for you. Don't know what that is. Um, it's an acronym: High Pressurized Air. It uses high pressurized air um, it's basically a paintball gun that's an airsoft gun what it uses um uses engines that's what they're called um usually they're you know they have your polar stars wolverines and redline those are the th those are the valken um they make a v uh, it's called the valken v12 it's discontinued right now um, if you can still find one cool um it's one of those things that players look at as the big upgrade you know because at least it's something that I thought, like, in 2014, if not even earlier, there was that big phase in Airsoft where, like, HPA was the way to go. Because yeah. the whole aspect of, like, SSG builds, DSG builds just wasn't really regarded because of, like, the Titan not being so much as a big thing. Yep. Like, and back then, in the day, they didn't have as uh, fancy of electronic MOSFETs, like, mm -hmm. where you have the, uh, the programmable trigger, that sort of stuff. You were stuck with trigger yeah. contacts. The HPA allowed you to get that micro switch and you, yes, can, you. you can shoot them really fast. Yeah. Which is cool because like, you know, like back then it was cool. Like, I mean, you see videos like what well, speed soft at Nilsson doesn't matter. It was like polar star was the thing to get, you know, then Wolverine became a thing with their, um, the very first thing, the SMP, which is a single moving part. Um, it's a drop in engine. And that introduced the era of like people being able to do basic tech work. You know, people were like, screw the gears. Not, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I look at them. 
I, I heard some. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> so, like, you know, you you see these things, and it's just like, oh, you just drop it in. I can ditch everything. That's how I felt when I got an HP for the first time. I had a Wolverine Spartan Inferno Gen 2, like the entry level for Wolverine. And now a couple things that I think people should consider if they are debating whether to go AEG builds um, and HBA builds. If your mindset is, I'm going to buy a one-time thing to upgrade, I don't care about barrel setup, I don't care about gears, anything like that, I just care about being able to, like, better trigger response, go with AG, because in that re in that perspective, either you're going to pay minimum, I won't count the Valkyrie 12 oh, because it's discontinued, because it's 225 300 bucks for... A Spartan Inferno Gen 2, which I believe is the cheapest engine out there on the market. It could be wrong. I can or you pay... Quick. Yeah, today I can look it up. Or you can pay... What is it? 60 bucks, 70 bucks the, for an Aster? The Asters are $68. From what I can see on Evike right now, the cheapest is a Polar Star Jack is what I'm seeing. Let me, oh, and it's they got cheaper. Uh, 320 I believe the Spartan yeah. Throne Gen Two is three hundred. I know that, but those are the two cheapest, like the Jack and the uh, Spartan Inferno Gen. So the Spartan Inferno, there's two versions. There's one that's an FCU and a basic program, whatever. That's it's you, you can pay sixty bucks, and yeah, get... the Inferno right now is one hundred and eighty bucks, and that's the I... that's the cheapest engine I see. I miss HPA, and that sounds convincing. Um, no. but Stop. <laughs> but it's going to happen. But um, like not. I said, you know, you can either you're going to pay, okay, 180, which is, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty good for an engine. But, but then you have to buy you... the line that the reg, and a tank. And then you have to make sure that the field you play at has an HPA fill or that there is a scuba shop or something nearby that can fill it. Which so from that's... a local perspective for us, that's fine. Like if you're going to get HPA, Black Ops has fill stations. There's a scuba shop in Kenosha, Wisconsin, whatever. You know, you have every ability to use HPA here, which is cool. But in terms of, like, saving money, an Aster costs, like, 60 to 70. HPA is 180, but that's just the engine. You still need a LiPo battery. Like, you still need a battery. That's one thing so that... you're looking at 180 for the engine, probably 25 bucks for a battery. Um, the cheapest like, line I saw on e was, like... 130 it's the amp so amped has their uh it's like 140 they have, they have a kit which they throw in a battery you can do the exact same kit on evike it's like 135 so it's 140 for a tank and a line and a regulator and that's entry level so you're looking at 180 plus 210 i hope i did that math right 180 plus 210 no no 180 plus oh there's dogs Cool. 180 yeah. plus uh, 130. Excuse me for a moment. I'll be right back. That's fine. I can still talk while I'm... Alright, my bad. I'm back. You're good. I essentially paused it. Okay. What was I talking about? HPA. I can just cut and stuff. So, HPA. Damn, that's hot. Aster's what? 60 to 70? Yeah, an Aster is... $68 plus installation. Um, I guess you can take installation into account for HPA too, yeah. unless you so, know how to do it. 68 plus installation. I, I will not count installation for HPA because it's so dumb and easy that if you know how to use a screwdriver, you should be fine. Um, I, if you don't, I don't know what to tell you. But um, you're, you're looking at 68 bucks plus installation if you don't know AEGs, or you're looking at 180 for an engine and 130 for tank line and reg. So 30. Two, 210. Does that include battery? That's if you get the amp. So, what? That's 310. 180 plus 130 is 310, not 210. I'm so good at math, man. I yeah. was 310, 210. I mean, yeah, you asked me to do calculus. I got you, but you asked me to do, you know, 47 times 3. Here's uh, what happened I, I counted 80 and 30 I in know, the 100s. 143. Those a hundreds just gone. I suck at math. I'm a history major, so ha. Huh. But that's getting off topic. But yeah, yeah. three ten versus seventy bucks. Yep. Again, if you're looking at things like because at the end of the day, HPA is a great 
entry level upgrade for people that just want to get better trigger response to be able to change things on the field in terms of versatility i think it's great though like if yeah. you have fields with different um fps rules and stuff like that like i said so what you HP... play indoor a lot then go to outdoor yeah you if you go to, do, to do a dmr for something yeah, you know you it's just... super versatile you get on the back of the tank, you get on the regulator, you turn up the PSI, you lower it, you know, being able to have that versatility is really cool. AEGs, if you don't have that kind of patience, like for me and Potato, for example, we don't care. You know, for us, it's a spring change. The guns that we use usually have quick um, spring quick change springs, which even if we have to get to the gearbox, we don't have to open it, you know, take the gearbox, pop it out, put a new one in. You know, it's the same aspect, but like if you don't do tech work and you're just looking at it from a basic standpoint... HPA is a good route. You know, I we we joke about it a lot. You know, I joke about it because I've owned both. You know, um, I, I guess mean, a quick, I've owned both too. So yeah. a quick mini story, I guess, to why like AEG just has been more like relevant for me at least is this is before I did you know learn tech work like really well. Um, I had HPA. I had it for a couple months. I was so excited because I finally saved enough money to just. Because again, I'm a bunch of I'm like, finally got it. I got the Spartan Inferno. I got the tank. I played with it. I did um, um, AMS Northern Front 2. I had issues. I remember that. Um, I was having issues, but I fixed it. It worked superb. It was shooting great. Then Potato was like, use an AEG build. I'm like, no. I've waited too long. <laughs> I've waited too long to get this stupid HPA. I'm going to stick with it. No, no. Use a build. I'm like, no. He's like, no. Then, he, then, um, he finally convinced me, and because I wanted a sniper DMR, because I wanted something, he convinced me for a DMR. I got an SR25 of a hop up, and he built it for me. And he also had a Fatco Customs that he let me use. And I didn't even get to the Fatco Customs. I was just using an SR25, and I was already convinced. I'm like, this is, this is nice, you know, because there's so many things that go into a full build. You know, from that perspective, you know, you got gears, pistons, cylinder, compression parts, which is cylinder, um, barrel, hop up, bucking, everything. So from that perspective of like wanting a huge difference is pretty, pretty cool. And honestly, this I have experienced this at, with this at least like a stock HPA unit won't really shoot much dip from a stock gun because it's running on the same barrel and same bucking yeah. if you don't change that out. You know, so if you have an Avalon that's shooting what is he doing? far, and you want to have a malfunction, if you have an Avalon, sorry. stock Avalon, which great guns, shoot far as hell, and you put an HP engine and you don't touch the hop-up and all that assembly, all that, it's probably still going to shoot around the same as it was on contacts. So at that rate, if what you're trying to find is, what well, are you nodding at? I'm just, I'm looking on eBay. But I, I mean, HPA gets a lot of a lot of harp, and I don't I don't like HPA for many reasons, but many of them are for like me personally. So I love being able to like build my gun and do all that stuff. You can do that with HPA, but it's not the same thing. Like it's something that I can put my time, my effort, and everything into, and then that kind of shows you know my work ethic and all that stuff. Saying hey. You know, I can do good work. It's not just HPA. You know, I, it kind of shows a part of me. I hate the line. I hate the tank. That is crazy. It's, it's, in, it's, it's dumb in my opinion because I've owned HPA. I owned HPA before I had an upgraded AEG, and I've owned HPA after I've had an upgraded AEG. And both times, the first time, HPA was cool, but it was cumbersome and... It was expensive, and I was, you know, like 12 or 11 at the time, so, you know, money wasn't, like, rolling in. And then after I had it, it was uh, it was just a downgrade, in my opinion. And, uh, I mean, yeah, some people that, you know, you see the videos of speed softers, like, lighting some dude up. Yeah, those dudes are just dickbags. But um, people can do that with AEGs, too, and... Um, if, if I mean, they just everybody's like, oh, HPA means cheaters, and I I get you can adjust your reg and all that stuff, and um, you know cheat like that. But I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. Not everybody's a cheater. Uh, sure, there are some, and I've had bad experiences with HPA people, but not to say that I I've also had bad experiences with AEGs. So you know, it's to each his own. 
Yeah, if, if that's your reasoning for choosing between the two, like, oh, HP has bad work because it's speed stuffed, I'm going to, like, say this in a nicest way. It's kind of a dumb reason. <laughs> yeah. Don't use that as a reference for what you do. You know, I get it. You know, a speed soft as it is gets a bad rep anyways because almost every video you see on YouTube of big airsoft fight, it's almost all the time <laughs> freaking a indoor speed soft, field. dude. And it's I, it, either HPA or some really yeah, high speed. It, it's a dude goes in, lights him up, and the guy's like, yo, we're shot me, and bam, fists start flying. And it's an HPA gun. A lot of the times it's an HPA gun. But like, don't make that the reasoning. You know Why? Well, you're not going to get it. Best best way you can kind of sum it up is get what you want. If you, yeah. you know, if you're not going to you know mess with it, and if you're going to play at different fields, get an HPA. Um, if you don't really know too much about guns either, get an HPA. They're super easy. They're low maintenance. You don't have to worry about anything. Like, yeah. for example, Gus just had – he did the build, what, like three months ago? And you're Which doing one? maintenance on it. You're 416. Oh, yeah. I, I had to re-shimmer today. So. Yep. So, you know, over time, things wear. Um, maybe you need to re, uh, resize the O-ring so that you get proper compression. Your FPS goes up. You may have to change the spring because it wears out. HPA doesn't have that as long as you know you keep it in good working condition and everything. Then there's no there's no reason that you should have any issues with that besides maybe like a barrel unit. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'll point out some con. I don't want to stay uh, forever on HPA, but some cons. I guess I'll point out because I had it for a couple months. Um, the line wasn't an issue for me. I didn't really see an issue with that. Um, the tank though, um, I guess this more applies to dudes that are bigger. You know, that's extra weight. <laughs> I'm a big dude. Yeah. I don't... And what I was struggling with, this was probably just like a stupid error on me, but my backpack that I would use to carry the tank was kind of large, and it was like turning on its side, and the regulator was jabbing into my back. Um, there was happened at Northern Front. The tank was perfectly positioned fine inside the backpack, but I got shot, and I just... <laughs> You know, I just fell. <laughs> like they were trying to drag me, and there was just so much weight. And I guess that's more of like a like a, I guess you can say it's like a bitch thing to complain about. But like it's small I things like that. Guy. Yeah, it, it it's still small things like that that could be annoying. And enough annoying things top onto each other, it just becomes like I can't deal with this anymore. But I didn't get rid of HPA because I had a crappy experience. I had a great experience to the point where. I kind of miss it. I'm considering I'm getting back into it, especially oh, yeah. for indoor with my high kappa. It's Here happening. It it's happening. Um, I'll talk about that too, I guess. Um, but if if you are looking into not doing any tech work, we'll talk about that as well, like learning teching and stuff. If you're just going to stay like an average Joe, I just want to put it, go HPA 100%. Um, because that's another thing too when i learned how to tech when i learned how to you know build my gun you know it's i saw like i just felt like i could make this so much better than hpa which i still think they're great hpa guns out there they're also evolving in a lot polar star um released um their new mechanical redline also has heather mechanical for a while which means no battery because that's something that people think like oh it's on an ag so i don't need a battery you need a battery if you don't have a battery you don't work unless you have right. mechanical but there's having the race stock, so no line. But like then those tanks, they're so small. They're CO2. They or they're CO2, and they don't yeah. last. Like the biggest, I mean, amount of shots you can get out of them is like it's like one mid cap. Like it's like one mid cap, and shots. then it's cool. Like oh, no line, and then well, one one AEG dude's next to you. Just all right, reload. You're in the back, just <laughs> putting the CO2. Yep. While you're in a fire fight. So I guess that's hanging on it, but like. And as it wears out and goes lower, you get less distance, you know, yeah. less less power behind the shot. But anyway, I think that's enough on HPA. One Thank more you. thing. One more thing. Closing statements. You can't really fix HP either. If you have a problem uh, yeah, with the engine, can. if you have a problem with the engine, you're gonna have to probably replace it. If it's like a problem like the solenoid, it's done. You know, that's the thing that sucks, and that's like another, I guess, 180 bucks instead of like, oh, my Titan's having issues which can be diagnosed and stuff like that. But I think we spent a lot, which is good because I think there's a big debate between that HPA or HE for upgrading. Um, I guess we can talk about GVVs. GVVs. Um, God, what a minority. Well, where in do we start? I don't know. Now my experience with GVVs myself is only pistols. 
Um, in terms of GBBRs, that's all for Potato because he's actually played and owned them. Oh yeah. So, so what's my... your opinion on those? <laughs> well, that's that's interesting. There's a few different kind of like opinions on it. So you have kind of like that tactical. Uh, like if you guys follow T Rex Arms, uh, they did a video from this dude from Japan who did like um, real steel quote unquote drills with an airsoft cool. gun. It was pretty good because he had all the fundamentals down. He just, you know, needed to learn how to shoot an actual gun, um, which if you're doing that is cool. But in other sense, mags are heavy, so it's going to kind of slow you down. Um, they generally have, you know, 30 to 60 round capacity where yeah, mid caps have, kind of you know. Yeah, and it's cold. It, it sucks. You have to do tons of maintenance and stuff like that. In my opinion, I'm not a big GBB fan unless it comes to pistols. I've owned GHK, KWA, GMP, WE. Um, I've owned plenty of different gas blowback guns over the years. Green gas, CO2, HPA conversion, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, I've, I've probably owned it. Um, it's just the, the only ones that, are, that you can kind of get away with are the SMGs or pistols. Because the SMGs are light enough, the mags are small enough that, you know, it's it's quick and everything like that. But generally, rifles and stuff is not my go-to. Yeah, in terms of, like, teching on GBBs, this is for rifles. I don't have any much experience. Like, when I was doing tech work at Black Ops still, like, I remember a dude came with me with a rifle... No, he asked me about a rifle, about GBBRs, if they're worth it. Um, and I told him, like, you really have to know how to take care of them. Um, and it's kind of it kind of sucks if you don't, because then you have to take it to a tech, you know, maybe. You, really, you should be taking it apart every week, every time you play. Yeah. But if, you're, if you don't know, you have to take it to a tech to do that, to clean it and all that stuff. And that's going to get really, really expensive. And then I guess that's another downside is green gas sort of expensive and then again the mags are quite expensive like, like 50 bucks on, a pop. on e-bike here for example i'm gonna just click on this this for, and like a certain like and, i guess comparison is like 60 dollars yeah when you look at like an elite force mid cap they're seven bucks a pop yep so and like another thing is here's one thing i think is interesting someone told me this I, it was a long time ago and i was refing and I was talking about GBBs with this dude, and he's like, you know, if you have a really good understanding of real steel, like real firearms, you can apply that really well to GBBs, yep. which is, I don't I don't know anything about real steel. Like an AG, cool, I can work on that all day. But a GBB, you know, if you can take those down, if you have that understanding, apparently things are really similar, so I guess that's a good Yeah, so that. Kind, of, kind of where he's coming from. All right, so... Uh... Where I left off, GBB M4s. So um, they take apart very similar to real, uh, real M4s or AR-15s, however you want. Push out the rear pin, got the bolt, all that stuff. There, it's obviously going to be different because airsoft, you're running off of gas compared to um, you're running off of you know a actual shell casing, uh, black powder, and all that stuff, whatever. Um, same thing with like handguns. So the Glocks that Elite Force came out with, they take down almost exactly the same. They got, you know, a barrel, a trigger group, all that stuff. And it, it's similar, but not exactly the same. So if you know how to take them apart and clean them, then you, uh, you can be semi-effective. Like, I don't know how to build them, but I can take them apart, clean them, and, you know, make sure everything's working good, depending on, uh different different things so yeah what's your what's your thoughts on that um in terms of gbbrs i'd have to eventually one day i guess play with them to experience them oh i i do because it looks it looks interesting i had one dude at black ops who wants his like i don't like using anything besides gas like rifles because you know he likes the kick and stuff like that so i guess the immersion and all that stuff my immersion um, in my opinion, though, I feel like if I learn how to work on them, cool. But if I don't, you know, once problems occur, it's like, you know, well, I O-rings, this and that. I could be wrong, you know. If you're a gas bullet rifle tech, you know, you may know more. But for me personally, I would not maybe run with it. Now, pistols are a different story to me. 
I don't know why, but I love pistols. I really do like pistols. I like tinkering with them. I just like taking them apart and just, you know, seeing what's up with that. And because they're fairly simple to work on, I feel like they're actually, in terms of like, if you were to grab like an Elite Force Glock, you're to take that apart, you would have a more calm experience taking that apart. In terms of upper, let me divide that. Um, if just a slide, not the lower. If you, I mean lower kind of. But if you're just taking um, apart the upper, you're going to have a more calm experience with that than taking apart an AEG because there's less parts because it's a pistol and it's fairly simple. You know, take the slide off, take the guide rod out, and you take out the outer barrel, which usually the hop-up is there with. Then you take out the blowback unit, which the air nozzle will slide out of the blowback unit. And that's how it pr pretty much is. And you do everything vice versa. Um, I guess the big popular gas blowback pistol in terms of upgrading are Glock platforms and then the high Kappa. Um, um, there's, there's like, in terms of like the Milsom world, I see Glocks everywhere they're really good especially the co2 one um potato owns one i don't know which one it is it's the which uh gen the one, it is. it's the gen 4 gen 4 co2 um so gen 4 is just the styling in case you didn't know um yeah. they're they up to they're out to the gen 5s now um elite force is working on the new ones coming out so yeah and from the eyes of like just a casual player i like pistols if i could do pistol only I, I do. I, I started doing it. it. So at Black Ops, like I've tried it a couple times. It's kind of challenging. You can get away with it if you if you're if you're that sneaky. You can really get away with it at outdoor fields as well. Of course, indoor is or just small fields in general are very good for that. So in terms of like a player perspective, in terms of tagging perspective, um, if you want to learn how to just basically take down your gun and clean it, I think pistols are a good route because like they're so simple. And in terms of what you need to clean and like take care of in terms of parts is all upper um, on high kappas though. Maybe you might run into like a hammer spring that needs replacing um, you know, stuff like that. But um, now from a teching perspective, if you want to go that route, high kappas are the way to go because the elite force glocks, um, there's really no point in messing with them. They shoot really good out of the box. Um, this is essentially quoting um, Ryan Dean, Fat Kid, Fatco Customs. Um, he has a fully built TM Glock, and he said that his Elite Four shoots better, right? Yep. Yeah. And a fully built TM Glock, like a lot of parts into it, still shoots awesome. It's still super cool. Yep. But, you know, I guess you know, if you're looking to keep it stock, look into the Glocks um, or anything VFC Elite Force, you know, FNX 45s, um, the new M17s. I personally say I would stale. recommend look for CO2. Um, yeah, that's another thing too. If especially you're... if you live in the north or in colder climates, the CO2 is going to work 100 yeah. times better than green gas, especially, especially when it's cold outside. As well, if it's just a secondary, like it's just going to be holstered, get yourself a CO2 pistol, one extra mag if you need it. You know, some a lot of fields these days are kind of getting rid of MEDs, especially. So I haven't really found the reason to get a pistol until I started playing a little more indoor. And I, I, I like to do pistol only. Then I found a reason to get one again. So I got a high cap. But, you know, if your budget's softer, again, I'll bring up things that are affordable. The 1911 Tac Force, that, that gun is everywhere. And they take a beating. I used to own one. I paid 70 bucks for it. Got four mags with it. It had five previous owners, and it worked like a charm. Pop up was good. It, um, of course, eventually it needed um, a little bit of love, but like it, it, it functioned completely fine. It worked in cold temperatures. Um, they're pretty affordable for what you get. They look they look tactical. They're not basic or anything like that. Um, they're easy to work on. They're easy to repair. They have repair kits for them. So from that mindset, now if you're looking into upgrades and stuff like that, high capos. Um, TMs, um, I personally, I don't like WeTech High Kappas because their stuff's kind of cheap. But if you're looking to keep things stock, it's a great route. Um, it's definitely a good thing to consider. Uh, what else? AW Custom, it's WeTech. If you didn't know that, those are WeTech guns. Those are, if, those are very expensive WeTech guns, which 
I think is a little bit out of line. Um, if you're going to pay that much for an AW Custom, you're you're just paying for looks. Just get yourself like a Wii Tech High Cap. They have ones that are like $90, $100. You can find them used. Um, upgrading those, the problem with that is what they... So here's one thing that Wii Tech did with AW Custom is their their blowback unit like their blowback unit is essentially proprietary um you cannot fit any anything else in there that's like tm spec unless you do a lot of modding which isn't something that people like to hear like i could care less about needing to mod like when we say modding like if a tech says i need to modify this a, a dremel filing down yeah. you know you have to take something off that you know when you say modding, they're like, oh, you know, then from a person doesn't, then they'll start freaking out because some guy's dremeling their gun and they're like, what are they cutting off? You know, for Titans need to modify. But We Tech um, took the route, AW Custom, whatever, they took the route to make it proprietary to their own blowback unit. Um, and I think also the nozzle as well. So that kind of sucks. Um, so definitely TM. You don't have to make them flashy. You can put so many parts on those things to make them shoot amazingly good amazingly fast um you there's aip there's airsoft masterpiece there's cow cow there's a bunch of companies out there you know so yeah that's my opinion towards pistols gbbrs i can't really give you one like oh they're amazing because i don't have the experience i'm also like a high cap of fan but I, i'm a speed softer deep down i just don't embrace it potato knows as well i'm just starting to embrace it um yeah, it's happening. Speed QB belt, die mask, Honestly. at Black Ops. It's going to happen. M4 adapter in my high cap. But yeah. Um. Um, well, if you want to move back to like AEGs, you could talk about, uh, you know, SSGs. Cool builds, SSGs, yeah. We didn't stuff. talk about, we talked about like if it's worth, but what you can do to them. Um, you've so, done it more, so you take the floor. First. Yeah, so there are plenty of different things you can do with guns. Um, AEG specifically, you could do like a high FPS for a DMR. You could do low FPS for indoor. That's high speed. Um, you know, it, it all depends on kind of where you play. So, for instance, I have way too many guns, but that's beside the point. Each of them kind of fills a different role. And... Uh, kind of has a different tuning, if you will, associated with it. So I have a gun that I use for indoor. The particular indoor field we play at, Power, in Waukegan, has um, binary. So they allow binary. So I use binary because they allow it. So I'm going to use it. Um, and then uh, my other guns that I use for outdoor happen to be TM recoil shocks. They're all semi-auto locked. They all have... Um, very affordable. 400 guys. fps oh yeah they're so affordable like oh yeah like you don't have to save up at all you can just hop on it and buy it anyway they're all built for um you know outdoors so 400 fps range accuracy consistency i had a tm scar that was supposed to be a dmr but unfortunately um ams is possibly going to get rid of their dmr rule so rather than waiting for them to say hey we're canceling this I just went and made it um, a rifle, uh, so now I don't have any DMRs, but don't get me wrong, they still shoot super far, so it's not really too big of a detriment that it's not 445 and it's 390, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I built DSGs, so that just means dual sector gear, so on the sector gear it has less teeth and it's got two sets, so... It's got a set up here and a set down here. Each time it spins once, it would shoot two times effectively is kind of what it's doing is it's dropping your cycle time in half. Uh, so you can get very good trigger response, very good rate of fire. So if you see OC or um, like WAG, if you see their videos and their guns shoot really fast, most of them are DSGs. So, you know, they're going to shoot, shoot much faster. And that's going to be kind of, excuse me, more of an indoor gun. Um, generally, don't get me wrong, you can use them outdoors, but mm -hmm. more, of, more of an indoor gun. And then SSGs are literally anything else. So single sector gear, um, generally SSG is kind of dubbed like a fast gun. Uh, so, you know, 1301s and 
shooting, you know, 30 RPS and fast trigger response. But um, kind of depends on what you want to do. A good balance build is kind of something that I do for people when they're, you know, interested in getting into it. It's not super expensive, but it still has good parts. Um, you know, 13 to 1 gears with a, um, a high TPA motor, so that means high torque. Um, you know, like an ASG18K or something like that where it's high torque, so you get really good speed um, with the gear set, but you also, you know, get that torque from the motor. You get very good trigger response, very good um, uh, all other attributes, good longevity, all that kind of stuff. Um, like Gus can talk about his build, um, kind of what we did for that. That's kind of a good balance build between CQB and Outdoor, considering he's used it at both places. Yeah, so my 416 is used to be a VFC 416. Um, I don't, I, I think I've shot it stock three times. I'm not trying to sound like a dick with that information. Just saying, um, in terms of upgraded, you know, usually for upgrade routes, in terms of like a balance builds, the route is always the same. You know, usually it's SHS gears, SHS piston. Well, it was at least until things happened with SHS. Um, but the goal with that build was just to do a standard build. I have, so let me say what's in the gun. I have a ZCI barrel. No, holy crap, I wish. I have a ZCI motor, ZCI motor, SHS 131 gears, SHS piston, ZCI full cylinder. My cylinder head is still VFC. My piston head is still VFC. Um, Tappet plate is still VFC. And I have a, a Titan, the basic, not the advanced. You don't really need an advanced unless you want pre cocked, yeah, I guess. But uh, with that logic of that build, the thing that's nice about it is it's pretty budget friendly um it integrates parts from vfc which is fine because vfc stock parts are are fine you know you can't go wrong with certain parts that they use in terms of their gears you know cylinder head piston head whatever i get the things that i kept stock barrel setup is all stock for now because again i mean budget I, soft. what budget, budget softer soft. as well and when i take it out to black ops it, it shoots distances that are reasonable you know as much as like we said at the start, like that aspect of being able to shoot that far, if you do play at Black Ops, you have that distance of like being able to shoot from Chrono all the way to the white car by church. You know, it it shoots fine. Um, that was my very first build. Um, I'm very happy with it, except for the shim job. Even in videos, you can kind of hear how it was needing some love. But yeah, I mean. There's really nothing more to go off of it as well. Um, now, in terms still, of... What? I said I'm still here, just in case you... Yeah. yeah. But in terms of, like, doing what I did, um, it was based off of what I had to my disposal in terms of where I was playing at, how much money I had to spend. So if you are looking in for AEG builds, everything... At the end of the day, everything depends on where you play at, how you plan on playing there, what role you want to do. Everything's kind of different with AEGs. So that versatility with AEGs is still there when before the build is done. You know, once the build is the build is there, it's built, except maybe you'll change FPS or whatever. Because, you know, once you go from a transition where you want a high rate of fire, even with the Titan, you know, you want a lower gear ratio. If you want DMRs, typically you might want Higher gear, a higher ratio gear set, higher ratio gear set, and better compression, all that. So my was standard, you know, I take it to I take it to power, an indoor field in Waukegan, and I treat that thing like a tiny little SMG. You know, I can have that firing rate if I want to, to the point where people go, oh, it's full auto, and it's not. It's kind so, of funny because I funny. mean, I run binary, and people people harp on binary all the time. I'm gonna be real with you, 100. percent there is a difference, but unless, like, if you're you're some newer airsofter, yeah, you, it sounds like full auto. Both of them do. But for us, where we played, and I'm a tech, and so is Gus, we kind of understand the differences between, um, you know, the upgrading and um, all the different kinds of triggers and all that stuff. So we're like, oh, that's binary or whatever. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where I was going to go with that. <laughs>
I but yeah, lost that's my that's really the two. That's really the thing is like, you know, that's the thing. It's kind of hard for me to just talk about my personal build and be like, this is the way to go because there's just there's so many things you can do. There's so many different parts out there. There's so many different types of guns. You know, even though I will hate AKs because V3 gearboxes are a bit of a pain, you can build an AK, make the shoot amazing. You can, that you, can. you know, you can. And there's different types of guns. There's recoil shocks, which is have been growing in popularity because more and more people are learning how to tinker on them and build them fully. You know, and there's different um, applications for everything: DMRs, riflemen, SMGs. The MP5 uses a V2 gearbox. You can build that the exact same way you build my 416. It'll take the same parts, except for you can't change the trigger because the way they did it. Because it's that's, an MP5, so. MP5 yeah. triggers are different, and nobody makes an aftermarket one right now. Yeah, so that that's has, really like, adjustability. So yeah, so it's it's kind of tough to talk about like what we see, like listing things off of like what you can do with AGZZ, but seeing like what the best is or like a good route to take. It's kind of hard because we've all played with different things. Like I I played with a DMR. It it shot kind of far, and it was a DMR base, but it wasn't DMR FPS. You know, we've all, um, I've used multiple different builds. I've used fat codes. I've used spud cannons. I've used mine. So at, yeah, at the end of the day, the best I can say is first figure out what you're looking to do, what your plan is with that, where you want to play. Um, and the next thing, the last thing I guess we can talk about in terms of the world of teching and building guns and upgrading, keeping them stocked, whatever is, Tata. what oh he went quiet i'm yeah i'm here i just so I don't know what here's what i want you to do go in settings if you can the three dots and hit audio and yeah. video settings turn off um if you can't turn off there should be something where it turns off the blur effect because i think that's messing with your internet okay should be good now cool as okay, long as you so you were me. saying, yeah, I can hear you. I don't know what I was saying. Oh, yeah, cool. So You said the last thing we were going to talk about. Yeah, last thing we're talking about is teching, learning to tech. If you want to get into the world of teching, how you want to apply yourself to that other community of Airsoft. Um, and after, after that, I have one more point that I'll kind of, we can kind of finish off with. Yeah, so let's say, like I said, if you now in terms of teching, there's a lot you can do with that. Um, people have that mindset of wanting to learn to tech just to do basic stuff. Um, you don't have to be the level of a tech of like being able to do full builds like me and Potato to do basic things like maintenance, cleaning your barrel um gearbox reset yeah that should be that should be something everybody knows how to do like that's something that unlock your gearbox how to clean your barrel you should know how to do that yeah and now, this other is simple like diagnostic things yeah this is on the level of like not saying that you know this is maybe something you should do or don't it's something that i recommend that every player should do if you're if you play consistently a lot whether you run a stock gun built gun hpa whatever Learn basic teching. Now, there's a difference between custom work, full builds, and then basic teching. Learn how to adjust your boater height. Learn how to reset your gearbox, clean your barrel, because there's it's just small things like that that can be avoidable to maintain your gun so it's up and running. Like a GNG combat machine, that gun should have the lifespan of five years. If you take care of, you know, especially AEGs, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of moving parts. There's gears, there's pistons, there's springs. There's a lot of moving parts. Things get worn out. So learn how to take care of it. You know, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with your gun because I feel like people they have an issue. You know, you're it's your it's a stock gun, like it's a it's a combat machine. You're shooting it, it's making a weird noise. They look up G and G making weird noise, and you get a multitude of different videos of people with open gearboxes, cracked barrels, or something like that crack barrel i never seen that but like just things that are out of nowhere and they freak out because they're like oh i don't know what to do then they take their gun to a tech and the tech takes their gun 
I've seen this happen a lot. You know, I feel bad because people, players will leave their guns at like shops and stuff and the guns will sit there, you know, because there's a waiting list and all that, you know, the guns might sit there. And then when the uh, tech finally gets to it, it was something that could have been fixed and like, um, a couple seconds. minutes. Yeah. yeah I, it like, was just something dumb. Like there a motor lockup or. Yeah. The, I'll bring that up. There's a gun that was sitting at the black ops tech shop. It was there for two weeks. Cause there was like a, like three guns in the way. And then I finally got to it and I'm like, okay, what's going on? I did it. It was a gearbox reset. It was just locked up. And then I took the time to show the dude how to fix that. So he can avoid that, you know, and it sucks. You know, there are tech shops out there that are packed up with a lot of stuff, you know? So the worst thing is when they take your gun and they're like, yeah, it might be a month or two. We don't know. We have to first see what's wrong. You know, that's, that's the every, that's every step of repairs. You have to figure out what's wrong with the gun before we do anything. You know, and then we figure out it's like, oh, it's it's really nothing major, <laughs> and that that kind of sucks. So, if you, in terms of learning and teching from that perspective, definitely learn the basics. Take some time, watch some YouTube videos. YouTube is a great teacher for basic things like that. Now, in terms of building, I'll give Potato the floor for that one for a bit. Then I'll give my input on what he has to say about getting into building guns, custom work, stuff like that. So the main thing when it comes to building guns, in my opinion, is, um, you know, give it your all, you know, don't, don't have, for lack of better words, don't half ass something because, um, that just reflects poorly, reflects poorly on you. So, um, like, especially if you get to the point where you're good and you start building guns for other people, uh, don't do, don't do half ass shit. Make sure that your build is something that you want it to be. So, you know, maybe if, for example, you weren't happy with the shimming when you put it all together and you're like, oh, you know, it doesn't sound as good as I wanted it to. Take it apart. Take that time and do it because that shows a lot. Um, it shows your character and it shows a lot of stuff. Like when I first got into teching, that was something that I wasn't really um, worried about. And then I talked to Ryan D at Fatco Customs. He's taught me a lot. And that's some of the big stuff is, you know, quality. Um, another thing is if something breaks, offer some kind of like warranty. Um, I, I offer a warranty when I do people's guns. For example, like if a part breaks, depending on what it is, if it was, you know, something that's the build's fault, like my fault, or if it's something that the player did, um, I try to work with them and find a reasonable, um, excuse me, why do you keep turning off? Uh, a, key, a reasonable uh, way for me to be able to fix it without, you know, breaking the bank for them again. Um, so maybe if that's, you know, charging them for parts instead of, you know, parts and labor or something like that. Um, you know, if a, if a tech doesn't stand behind their work, then they're not a tech in my opinion. Same thing with if they don't give it their all, if they're just kind of, you know, half-assing it. I don't, I, I don't like that. Yeah. Um be prepared mentally for the things not to work yes that's how teching is um be prepared for parts not like each other so i guess a quicker like little story i first tried learning how to tech when i was like 15 um i had a combat machine and i wanted to build it and i had a full parts list um i I had everything except uh uh mosfet because i didn't really know anything at the time it's another thing ask questions um but you know, a lot of times people become great techs by teaching themselves, which is fine, but you should always look for help. But beyond that, um, I, I remember I put it together. Um, it, it, it wasn't working. Things weren't working. I was getting stressed out. Um, it reached a point where I, I took the gun to a tech shop. I'm not going to say where because the service issues. was just, you know, anyway. Issues. Um, I took the to the shop. And they, they took my gun for three to four months. I got it back, and they said it was fixed. And the problem was more than just what they said was wrong. So although one problem was fixed, they didn't tell me this and that. And I was getting super stressed out, and I just I, – I was done. I didn't want to do anymore. Um, so – and that was kind of a crappy experience, which, you know, in terms of teching, be patient, you know. You have to be patient. You have to be willing to deal with crap like that. It's like anything in life that you want to learn and stuff. It takes practice. It takes practice. Definitely, um, I guess a quick suggestion if you're wanting to get into it in like an easy way, 
Um, if you have a gun that you don't trust yourself opening up because you don't want to not know how to put it back, go and hop up, go to your local field, see if people are getting rid of old stuff, you know, practice, tinker. Um, that's what I did. I practiced on the Black Ops rentals. Um, I, I practiced on a couple of potatoes um, guns because he was supervising me. And um, I eventually learned. I reached a point where I can now do, do most of the stuff on my own. You know, a couple things here and there I still need practice, like shimmy. You know, shim job with my 416 at the start was great. For some reason, something went wrong. Then it wasn't really great. And today I did a good job. I took the time out of it to do it. Um, so, yeah, if you have to be willing to learn, you have to want to learn. If you don't, and it, it just to do basic things, you should try to at least learn the basic things. If you want to get into the custom stuff, doing guns for other people, I guess that's cool. I don't really look at it like that. I the mo I use it for other friends in terms of basic repairs, you know, um, because I know Potato, you know, he, he can be, like, doing, like, the big boy build. So, if like, someone has, like basic repairs and stuff i jump onto that you know because it's something that's usually more simpler to do which i enjoy doing um but yeah that's really all i have to say about like teching you know in, from that perspective yeah intro to teching um, so if you uh, want to learn go ahead yeah if you want to learn practice find like a broken gun try to fix it if you can or just take it apart put it back together take it eventually becomes muscle memory. Like, you know, you're just front pin, reverse pin, you know, well, front pin, upper, you know, so on. That's like an M4. You get used to it just like, you know, riding a bike or whatever. But I first started out on a Walmart M4, which wasn't exactly, you know, quality. But <laughs> it got me into the saying, of, hey, you know, let's take this apart. And then I did a combat machine. And just don't work on your main gun. That's the main point. And if you need help, don't be afraid to ask. Um, you know, go to your little tech shop. Usually, techs are pretty friendly. Um, you know, ask them if you know somebody that techs, or you know, um, you can always you know check out check out my Instagram. Not not to plug me, but um, Spud Cannon Customs. You know, if you got any questions on guns or whatever, you know, message message it's me. A, I'd be glad it's to. A Facebook help. post away. Yep, that's all it really takes. You go in an airsoft group on Facebook. You make a post. Hey. Can someone help me? You'll get responses because, like, uh, as as you play, you you just teach yourself a lot of stuff. You know, over the time, you just teach yourself things. Um, but like, you know, that's how a lot of techs learn. Whether they were taught or they taught themselves, you don't have a lot of experience. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, always ask for help, whether it be from the guys that do their custom work, whether it be the guys that have just been doing for like repair stuff like that. You know. Black Ops Tech over there, James, you know, you have a question for him, he'll he'll help you out 100%, stuff like that. So, yeah, so I guess that's my logic to it. Ask questions, don't be afraid to help. Yep. You know, ask people's opinions, ask them to be honest. When I did my 416, I had other people shoot it. I had Potato shoot it. I had Ryan Dean from Fat Co Custom shoot it, and they all gave me their opinions. Potato said, hey, you know, redo your shim job and i finally got to it even though i should have done it earlier <laughs> i've been busy but i finally got to it you know so take pride in your work yeah yep take pride in your work that's a big thing and then kind of just to overall finish if you're looking for a tech to do your work make sure that you know talk to other people see what they think um you know, if you, you know, for example, if you play at Black Ops and you wanted to know what my builds were like or Fatco Customs or Umbrella, if you know somebody there that has one or if you know some people there, just ask them. Say, hey, uh, do you know this person and what is your opinion, you know, on their work? Or, mm -hmm. you know, if you see Gus or I on the field and you want, you know, to test out one of our guns because you want to build one or you want one built or whatever, I'm usually glad to let people borrow a gun. I bring enough usually, so... You know, if your gun goes down and you're looking to upgrade, just be like, hey, you know, I want to I want to try this out. Um, and I'm usually I'm just like, here, go go have a good time. Uh, it's it's all about, you know, making those connections, meeting people, um, you know, like most of my builds are my friends. So a lot of the N7 people, 
um, Dan, uh, well, yeah, and seven people. So, um, yeah, that that's kind of that. If you you know ask questions, if you want to try out something, ask. If you want a gun to be built, kind of you know get get multiple opinions to kind of look up parts on your own and to see. Um, and like I said, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you don't know what the point of something is, ask. You know, most of the time people um, like text don't mind answering questions. I will get mad at you, however, if you constantly nag me about your gun. I have a wife, and I can't do your gun that time. And if I tell you, I'll let you know when it's done. Don't bug me about it. That's one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes yeah, to building guns. That's another thing. Be patient with text as well. And here's one thing that I will throw out. Um, techs that want to be recognized for their work in a good way will let you use their stuff in terms of like usually they'll have a gun that's built that's built for that purpose like this is yep. my hey you know see if my work is good you know if you go up to a dude like if you're like this i understand if you're stingy with your own stuff but like if you go up to dude and they're rocking a built gun you know and they're not even gonna let you hold it you know the, then what's the point you know you know, the, the techs the techs want to share what they've done that's the cool thing about airsoft like in the card community like the personal builds like we want your opinion like i want my i want your opinion like if i build you something you know i'm not gonna be like i want to nah, know you... how to make it better i want to know how to yeah you know especially if we my do game, something I wrong. Know what you think of it question text too like, don't be afraid to be like hey like i feel like maybe you maybe you didn't error. Like, we're not we're human you know I, I this I did this to my gun. I was putting it back together, and I forgot to put the spring back in. <laughs> because it happens more often idiot. than you think. You forget the top board on the Titan. You forget, you know, Through something the top dumb. Board. You know, it, it happens. You know, so you know. I guess that's also a message to basic techs or people getting into teching. You know, don't be afraid to let people try out what you're doing. You know, you yeah, might especially think... if you're learning. Especially if you're learning, get that, um, get that rapport. Get people to you know comment on your build say hey you know um it wasn't feeding or whatever whatever it may be you know get people that either know what they're doing or just uh, even random players just be like hey what do you think of this you know yeah i i i'm right i installed a titan in a gun for someone and i was working on it and i wasn't too confident about it. i'm like this doesn't sound right i had i had two of the refs at black ops tested i had Nick from Black Ops, like, look at it here. He's like, nah, man, like, you're good. You, you did good on this one. So it's also like a confidence booster as well. You know, you encourage techs to keep doing what they're doing, um, to deliver guns that are just cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, once on, you, that, on that same note, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. One, like, once you, uh, once you shoot a upgraded gun, I'll, I'll throw HP in because why not, you know. <laughs> Because not going back. to once yeah once you use an upgraded gun you won't go back like I I refuse to take a stock gun to the field except for like some exceptions like pistols because like I don't care that much um I guess you can call me like a being petty for that but, like it's just like once you shoot like a fat co a spud cannon oh <laughs> dude <laughs> um like uh vipers HPA I shot that thing that thing shoots really really good. It, um, it also it's... makes you evolve a little bit in the sport, which is cool. You involve yeah. yourself a little more. So my last point was if a tech messes up on something on your build, let them know. Tell them, be like, hey, um, or like if you weren't expecting something, uh, you know, like, hey, it's not shooting, you know, like you said it would. Or, you know, like certain things are kind of dumb. Like if it's shooting 380 and you wanted it to shoot 385, you know, there's some kind of um, – leeway in that don't be overly petty about it but you know if it's if it's supposed to be shooting 400 and it's shooting 350 that's a little bit a little bit different or you know if it breaks reach out to that tech and be like hey you know this happened they should be willing to help you um help you fix it and uh that is my closing point to our tech and q a if gus has any final words um yeah i'm gonna close off a couple things to mention if the quality isn't perfect or we seem like we're kind of just like zoning out, this was kind of last minute because the podcast, it one happened and then it just went away because life happened. I've had school, you know, 
life. So I want to bring it back. I want to bring it back on a weekly basis if I can. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get Potato back in on one. Yep. He told me to bring the podcast back up. So, you know, I think if I were to do another one with him, we'll bring up Nilsom's. Potato has gone to plenty of AMS games. That I have. I've gone to two, but I can still talk about them. But closing off here, not to sound like we're advertising or anything, but if you need tech work, <laughs> if you're looking for custom AG builds, I will recommend Potato. It's what Cannon Customs. I will put his – what info do I put for you? Uh, you can put my Instagram in the description. I'll put his Instagram. So. You can DM him there. Um, he does – Builds M4s. I don't know what your limit is, but per, I guess preferably an M4. I mean, I can do pretty much anything. Um, you know, if you have a question on something, message me. If you're looking to buy a new gun, message me first and be like, hey, is this something you're willing to work on? Um, mm-hmm. If that's your sole purpose is to upgrade it. Otherwise, generally M4s, VFCs are great, LCT AKs, SEMAs, that sort of stuff, yeah. um, GNGs. Really, whatever. If, if you're looking for, I guess, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, I'll, Fat Coat Air Customs. Or, <laughs> oh, yeah. Fat Coat Ryan Customs Dean. is definitely somebody to check out. Check um, him out as well. If, you, is, if, if you you're, link it. If, I'll link something. I don't know. Yeah, because if, if you link Fat Co, he's a super good tech, super good dude. Um, he's taught me a lot of stuff I know, so I owe him a lot, uh, a lot of credit. He's big um, into the recoil shocks right now as well, so if you're looking into those. Potato also works on them starting to, I believe. I am starting to work on them. I've worked on one of them, and or I built one of them partially with help from Ryan, and then I, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, you know, just hit us up and just say, hey, are you, are you comfortable with this gun? Do you know, yeah. you know? Just if that's say, hey, for customer like, work. Yeah, just be like, hey, this is my budget. Do you think this will work? Do you think this is worth it? Whatever. And then, you know, you're good to go on that. So, Basic um, basic repairs, I will gladly take those. You know, I I, I guess this is applies to me and Potato. I'm not sure how Ryan Dean works. Um, we charge parts and we charge labor. Um, we'll, we'll be reasonable. We'll talk it out. We'll be reasonable what's needed. If you're looking for basic repairs, like let's say you need like a piston's gone out, you know, you feel like something's gone wrong, I, I will probably do it. I like the basic repairs. Um, high Kappa's pistols, I I do pistol work. Um, I do uppers only, so I'll say this about pistols. I'm just trying to get into a little bit about doing some custom work. I'm trying to stick to locals so far, so Black Ops or Power Meetups. Um, so things like working on uppers, not trying to do so much lower stuff, so only internal parts, uppers, so like blowback units, nozzles, guide us, uh, putting a short stroke kit in there, stuff like that. I'll do so high kappas, glocks. I'll do if it takes TM spec parts, I'll look he'll at it. it. What I said, he'll do it. Yeah, if it takes TM spec parts, I'll do it. Um, certain guns doesn't look like they can, like the. The SIG M17 takes TM spec parts, certain parts it takes. So let me know what pistol you got, and if you want to do it, yeah. So I'll link that stuff. And again, apologies if we sound dazed and stuff, trying to get it back out there. We threw a lot of information. It's pretty long, which I'm happy with. Um, Look for the next podcast. Um, Thanks for having me. Hopefully I'll be back. Thanks for being back. Look for pasta. Watch my gameplay videos. Look for Potatoes gameplay videos because I'm going to force him to start posting his because he records but doesn't do anything with them. Yeah. All right. This is Goose signing out. It was Potato. Goodbye. Adios.